So what I have here is a Burmy Rex C100 PID controller. And this I got off eBay as a package. It came with the PID controller, thermal coupler that has a steel braided cable, um, and it's threaded at the one end. So you can screw it into, you could tap something and screw that in. And it also came with a solid state relay. This guy here. This one here is rated up to, I think, it says 24 to 380 volts AC. Um, I'm not sure what the amperage. Um, the nice thing about the solid state relays is the there's no moving parts in it, so there's no contact points to, to wear out. Um, so, what is a PID relay? Well, basically, this allows you to control, um, I guess you could say, you could use it to control temperature um, with a fair degree of accuracy and it allows for you to, it's not just a simple on off situation where if it reaches a certain temperature it shuts off it actually will cycle and I'll get to that in a minute um, so that's where the PID part comes in that's why it's not just a simple on off gate um, I can't explain that very well I would look that up uh, and so you can understand but I'll show you how it works in this application because my application for this controller is I will be using it to control a barbecue um, hooked up to a fan so I can use it to control the airflow now how do you get into the menu this took me a while to figure out and there's a few different manuals out there so I downloaded some instructions and it took me a while this set here I downloaded and I thought was the correct set didn't apply. I ended up finding this manual here and it seemed to uh, at least for the most part the menus line up and I'll get to how to get into the menu so basically if you look through the menu it tells you all kinds of stuff you can do with it but I I only go for the basics of what I'm going to use it for um, so what I want to do is when it is below the set value in this case 23 I want it to turn on and cycle and you can tell it turns on right here with this little light also on the solid state relay that light is on and I'll get to how this works in a minute which I have hooked up to a fan right now which you can see is actually spinning I don't know if you can kind of see it but yeah you can kind of see it there it's spinning there's some airflow going on you can kind of hear it okay so that is for heating. There's also a cooling mechanism so that if it you want the set value when the this, this top value drops below the bottom value for it to turn on. And I'll show you how to get into the menu to change that. This took me a while by looking through the menu. But you hold down these two buttons on the left and it changes to COD. I hit set it takes me to SL1, SL2, so these are the settings I believe. I'm gonna go all the way up to 6. So SL6 according to the manual it allows you to change the action so it it reverses the action so you can turn it from heating to cooling. When it's on 1 it's on heating mode. If it's on 0 it reverses it to cooling mode so change this bottom value to a 0. Uh, how do I do this? Yeah so if I do this, oops, there, if I do that, zero, now to be in cooling mode, then you just hold down set and the back button, these two buttons here, to, to get out of the menu. But for me, I want it to be on heating mode. So now I'm just going to hold down the two buttons, and it stores the settings there. I'm going to go over really quickly the wiring of this as well and I'm going to do the wiring a little more proper this isn't 100 percent proper because I'm testing so be careful if you've <laughs> done anything like this because there's mains power going to this right now and you know you don't want to get electrocuted one and two this corresponds with the pins back here so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven or ten sorry miscounted five on one side five on the other side anyways one and two is your mains voltage and it'll accept 100 to 200 
40 volts AC. Number three, it doesn't designate what it is. Four and five is for your solid state relay, which I have hooked up to the solid state relay. Then here, six and seven, there's an alarm. Now, my controller are missing those. So I don't have the model that came with that for whatever reason. And then number eight, nine, and 10, are for the thermal coupler and as you can see here it says thermal coupler and that's where that goes with a positive and a negative negative. Um, and I have the thermal coupler obviously hooked up there right like that so that is that now let's get to actually trying this out and showing you how it works all right now I want to show you how it works I have some hot water and I have some cold water I'll get to that in a second um, and I have everything hooked up. So I have my mains power gumming into the PID relay, uh, PID controller, and then I have the lines going to the solid state relay wired up as per the diagram here. And then I have my fan or your device, whether it be a light or a fan in my case, hooked up to a power supply. In my case, I'm just using uh, a wall, wall wart a plug and it's providing some DC power to this fan. I have the ground wire hooked up directly to it and then I have the live wire coming into the relay and then it completes the connection when this turns on to the other side, to the hot side I guess. Uh, and that's all that there is to it so when this sh turns on and off it shuts this on and off. When this cycles it'll tr trigger this. In this case this is really low voltage anyway and low amperage. The solid state relay um, would be really good when you have devices that would draw more current or more voltage. Now, I'm going to take my thermal coupler and I'm going to dunk it into the hot water because the fan is going right now. Once it hits the set, the set value of 23, it'll shut off. There. Now it's off. When I put it back in the cold water, it turns back on. So that's essentially how this works. Very simple. It's just an on-off. It hits a set temperature. It'll shut on and off. Okay, now the unique thing about a PID controller instead of it just being a simple on and off, it hits a certain temp set temperature and it shuts off, is that it'll recognize that, hey, maybe it's taking a while to reach that temperature. Um, I will just keep the fan on. However, oh, the temperature is rising really quickly. I better not overshoot. I better start cycling, like turning on and off really quickly or intermittently the, the, um, the device that it wants to control in order to maintain the temperature. So I'll try to attempt to replicate that here by just, see, I'm at 23, but the fan is still staying on and off. You see the lights coming on and off, and the fan's cycling on and off, even though I'm at 23. And what's that doing is it recognizes, oh, in order for me to maintain that 23 degrees, I've realized that I need to cycle this on and off to, to apply a little more energy to keep whatever it's trying to um, heat to heat up in order to maintain that temperature. Now it's dropped below 22. Notice the fan just stays on constantly. So that's what makes it really unique for PID controllers, not just a simple on and off. And in fact, depending on how long you use this, it'll get smarter and realize it'll measure the cycles of how the temperature has been fluctuating and it will adjust itself accordingly to cycle this on and off. That's the best I can do to explain how a PID controller works. Uh, I suggest you Google it and read up on it a bit more, but it, I just wanted to mention that it's more than just a simple gate on and off. Once it hits a set temperature, it shuts off or shuts on. Um, it, it's actually a lot more sophisticated than that. So that's why these um, industrial controllers are so unique in in controlling temperatures. Okay, uh, next I'm going to build for this. The, the reason why I have this is for my smoker. And if you haven't seen that build, check out uh, 
check that out in uh, on my channel. I'm going to build a plate for this and then connect a, a longer tube to 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 this to a plate and then onto the smoker itself, which then allows me to force air to regulate the air going in and out of the charcoal smoker, um, and that's really handy. So that way, um, you know, it, it might make it a little easier to maintain the temperature when smoking. Um, and also, the reason why I chose this controller, it this comes with a thermocoupler that is rated, I think, all the way up to 400 degrees uh, Celsius centigrade. So it's uh, it, it has a really wide range that it can handle. In fact, there are some thermocouplers that go up even higher than that. And then you can get ones that go in the reverse as well. So I think this one's good from 0 to 400. I could be mistaken, but I'm more interested in the heating cycle anyway. Um, but yeah, so there's a few options out there depending on what you want to do if you're building a, a cooling system of some sort or uh, a freezer. So that's my kind of overview of how one of these work. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll do my best to try to answer them. I'm by no means an expert. I just kind of looked around and I, I figured out this controller would work for my application. I think a lot of brewers use this. Um, so you could also make a, a DIY sous vide controller with this. So thanks for watching and subscribe for more videos.